Today I want to take a look at the M365 Ultimate PowerShell. So this is a project I've started to load all of the Microsoft 365 commandlets into a single window. You know, as the suite has grown, we have a lot of different things to consider these days with Power Apps and Flow. We've got Power BI, we've got SharePoint Online, PMP with the community PowerShell modules. There's a lot of different places for an admin to consider getting their PowerShell commands. It would be really cool if we had a single script that could load all of them and streamline the process, uh, partly for education so that we learn what's available because the product team is, is changing and releasing new things quickly, which is great, uh, but also for time saving. You're going to each download page, uh, downloading those one at a time, you know, it, it's a tedious process that doesn't really add much value. So if we can automate it, why not? We'll have a single PowerShell file that will do all of the install module commands and get the various different things we want for the M365 platform. And at the end, we'll have a single PowerShell window where we can type in whatever command that we might read in a blog, documentation, and we'll have the command available. So less time on the setup and the prep and more time with using and learning the commands. So here we have a PowerShell file, uh, starts out a transcript and sets remote execution policy to remote signed. You do need that for some of the Skype for business functions. And then we go through a, a whole bunch of install module commands. Uh, first up, we have Azure Active Directory, which is gonna do things like find users and find groups and learn about authentication and you know, is a user account locked out? What's their email? What's their phone number? What's the display name? So some of that kind of basic identity management. Uh, we then have our, our favorite, the Exchange Online module, which everyone uses for mailbox, retention, storage, uh, maybe different uh, forwarding, group mailboxes, things like this. Even just setting up new mailboxes and working with migration. Email always seems to be the first workload. That's the, the entry point for using uh, the cloud services. We want to make sure we have that available. And then I put one in here for MS Online. My understanding it's been deprecated in favor of using Azure AD. I left it in here, commented out, maybe somebody needs it. Not really sure. There might be a scenario where you have to go to the old one. Then we get into SharePoint Online. These are kind of the official commands from Microsoft. These are going to be your, your vendor commands. And there's a few things in there that maybe you need to lean on that one for. Uh, my personal favorite is PMP for SharePoint PMP Online. Uh, this is huge. This is a community group that had the PMP monthly call. There's a lot of commands in here, a lot of creative use cases, and, and just a lot of creativity around what the community has added with extra commands that kind of let you fine-tune your, your settings. Uh, then we have Microsoft Teams, a little bit more of a, a new product in the suite for M365, um, but definitely a popular one and has caught on like wildfire. So now we need to go into Teams regularly for all kinds of things to manage, you know, channels and external sharing and files and chat and retention and compliance questions. Anytime we can automate those things, especially as the number of teams, number of channels increases, um, you're probably looking more to PowerShell and less to the Teams Admin Center where we go into the GUI and, and do things uh, manually. So that's a cool one. It has a lot of uh, momentum behind it. Here we have Power BI. I didn't even realize this, but Power BI has multiple modules. There's actually seven and each one has different capabilities. You might use them for certain workloads, but not others. If you're trying to make reports or update data connections, just, you know, what do we have out there for Power BI? What kind of reports have been published? What sort of data connections are they using? Just understanding what's available in your tenant um, might give a lot of insight as to different settings and changes you, you'd like to to modify and PowerShell helps do that because it's too tedious to open every report one at a time manually here we have power apps same sort of story a new cloud service that's gained a lot of momentum very popular kind of replacement for infopath on-prem and from an automation perspective, you can do things like the Power Apps Checker to see if there's any open issues uh, with apps that have been published. You know, is there something that maybe it worked last week and it doesn't this week? Or the number of Power Apps you have out there, just scale and adoption. Uh, is there anything that you'd like to know about ownership for 
you know, who to contact for the different power apps, um, maybe the connections that they are leveraging, anything with um, data gateway back to on-prem. A lot of cool uh, possibilities with the Power Apps automation. And there is this uh, namespace where it's XRM that's part of Power Apps. I don't really know quite as much about this one, but I think this is going to be your CRM dynamics workload. XRM, CRM, um, that may have more to do with using Power Apps with the Dynamics Cloud. But it has its own namespace, a couple of extra commands, and there's a link to documentation to learn more. Here we have Skype for Business. Now this is like Legacy, this is classic, but you still need it for certain setting changes. And it really kind of dovetails all the way back up here to where we had Teams, remember? So if there's certain meetings and recorded meetings and chat status where you're going to need to work on both Teams and Skype for Business, the old and new platforms, we want to make sure we have Skype for Business support. This command looks a little funny, and it should because what it's doing is downloading an executable and running it. Not actually a PowerShell module with the install module pattern, but a more traditional local install to get the module uh, available. And then finally, we have MS Graph. This is going to be more for your developers. This is going to be, you know, endpoints with HTTP POST to do different JSON send receive. But Graph has some uh, incredible you know, endpoints and, and potential for, for just detail and scaling. Um, so being able to automate that and see ways that we could invoke those via PowerShell kind of gives us a new channel for running the Graph API, maybe beyond the Graph Explorer GUI. We want to work through some automation of those Graph calls. Um, maybe, you know, this planning for like a scheduled job, but this lets you practice and how can I do the, the Graph API from PowerShell. So those are the modules we're looking at, kind of a tour of the PS1 file. Hope you guys find it helpful and thanks for watching.